For Polity in Johannesburg, I'm Darlene Creamer. Author Harriet Pullman and photographer Mark Lewis are with me to discuss their distressing but important book, Life is a Domeni, Portraits of Lives Lost. In 2016, 144 people in the care of the Gauteng public health system died from neglect, starvation, and torture. They died at the hands of those who were meant to protect them. Harriet, in the foreword, former Deputy Chief Justice Dikhan Musaneki described your book as a harrowing account of this tragedy. Why did you decide to write it? So Dikhan Musaneki describes the arbitration and the tragedy at life is a domeni as a harrowing account of what happened. But when he looks at the book, he talks about the importance of books and other media in terms of memorializing and remembering and preserving and not forgetting. And I think that really sums up why we did the book. Because I think we've become numb to numbers, 144, another tragedy, another human rights violation, and then the media just gives numbers. But this is about preserving the stories of the people who remain, the families, the loved ones, but also allowing them through their voices to tell the story of what happened to their loved ones in the life of Sidimeni tragedy. And when this tragedy was being exposed, the public were led to believe that the patients who had died had been abandoned by their families. This was not true. Mark, for the past four years, you and Harriet traveled to meet some of these families who lost their loved ones. You photographed people in their homes and listened to their stories. Tell us about this experience. It was a blatant lie that, in fact, it was quite the opposite. It takes a, an enormous amount of energy and strength to get into these institutes in the first place. And, uh, you know, it, 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 was a, it was definitely a safe place for a lot of, a lot of the families. The journey in terms of photographing uh, the families it was, uh, you know, relatively stressful and traumatic, but we, we, we would go to people's homes. They were, they were previously asked to put together some images if they had that, that I could take the portrait with the image of their loved ones who had died. Um, and so, you know, arriving at someone's house, you know, even five years down the line, Emotionally, it's still very, very raw. And equally, five years gives enough time to sort of start moving on in a way. And so to enter people's homes and then ask them to go back in a sense, you know, it takes its toll on everyone. And it certainly took its toll on both Harriet and I, but on the people we were interviewing and photographing equally, you know, and it was quite a traumatic experience. But... Um, you know, equally, I think it also helps the family members to talk this through yet again and get it out a little bit more. And And I hope it helps to deal with the situation, you know. Some of the, the families lived on the periphery of Johannesburg for the most part. They had received some compensation. And so, you know, a lot of families had moved into newer spaces on the on the edge of either the West Rand or the East Rand. So there were long distances traveled and quite difficult to find homes because the new areas that people had moved to Google doesn't really cater to that. So we were often sent on quite a wild goose chase to find people. But uh, with the help of a fixer in some cases, we, we managed to do it, yeah. Harriet, in your book, Advocate Adila Hassim says that the life is a catastrophe was not only the result of a failed system, but also of uncaring, callous individuals. The deaths of patients were not natural, as many of the death certificates wrongly stated. Can you elaborate on this? Yes, sure. So I think the stories in the book really encapsulate that. And we work very closely with the Life is a Domeni Family Committee to actually have access to families and to identify people who were willing to be interviewed. 
the death certificates in 90% of the cases were, were incorrect. They were not natural causes. People died horrifically. And I think the families, as well as in the arbitration, in the case studies, make that very clear. People were left hungry. They were cold. They were starved to death. Many were tortured. There were accusations of violence towards them. But in many cases as well, there were no death certificates because people found people buried. And so the, the enormity of the callousness of it really needs to be, to be told and to be remembered. And I think going forward, it's not just about fixing the mental health system. It is about creating a culture of care that people who are in care and people who are in mental health, yeah, need to develop a culture of, of, of kindness and what appropriate care looks like. And, you know, Mark and I did try to get nurses and public health care workers to talk to us and they wouldn't because they were scared. So again, something that is untrue. And I think the arbitration made that very clear. These were not natural causes. And also people died very quickly often. So they'd been in care for a very long time on the appropriate medication. And then often within two, three weeks in the facilities, in the NGOs, they, they were dead. Social justice activist and former executive director of Section 27, Mark Hayward, quotes Judge Tefo's findings that Kodani Mathlangu and Dr. Mahaba Manamela created circumstances in which deaths were inevitable. Hayward expressed hope that the perpetrators may be sent to prison one day. Mark, do you think that the victims and their families will ever see justice? And can you tell us if the families have received any compensation? So, yes, obviously, I, I, I sincerely hope that there's going to be justice. I mean, I think the thing that, that, that has to happen is that everyone needs to remain positive about this. And it's still quite a long journey to go, for particularly for the, for the family members. Um, and pressure needs to be put on the NPA. You know, that will certainly happen through Section 27 and SADAC. But I think, you know, equally for, for us to continue shining a light on this and remain positive and to try and advocate for some sort of campaign that will just keep it in the light and keep it going. I think it's not by any means the end. And uh, everyone needs to gather strength and try and see this to the end. And I think there is a big chance that that, that there will be justice, you know. Um, I certainly like to think that, and I'm sure that the families equally. You know, around the compensation issue, people were paid, I think they were paid about 1.2 million, um, which, you know, on the outside sounds like quite a lot of money, but, you know, when, when there's a family of seven or whatever and in various children and it has to get divided, not much remains. So, yeah, I mean, I think it helped but it was just really an acknowledgement of wrongdoing. And I don't think it, it solved many problems at all. And I think, you know, the only way to solve the problem is that the people get their justice. And I don't think, as Christine Namala from the Family Committee has, has said quite often, there is no closure to this. You know, there can only hopefully be justice. And um, I think it will happen. I think it will happen. Lastly, your book was dedicated to the families who lost their loved ones during this tragedy. Can you both share how the families have responded to your book? You know, I think there has been a measure of justice already. And the inquest, which is quite groundbreaking in this country, that individuals have been held accountable for their actions. And the judge has said in the inquest, that those actions caused those deaths is very important in our in our country at the moment. And I think families in terms of the book, but both the inquest are, as Mark says, you know, extremely hopeful, but that the fight isn't over. And I think for me, what's really important about the book and how the families have received it has been they are hugely positive 
that they are being acknowledged and how they have had to deal with the last years is in fact being memorialized. But it is also a book, not just about their pain. It is a book about a fight back and the extraordinary tenacity of families and Section 27 and the people in SADC who are relentless. <laughs> they are not giving up. And the fight, as Mark says, is not over. But one feels very confident that if ordinary people and civil society says no, then there will be justice and they will continue with that. I think it has been met favorably. You know, I think in any of these sorts of situations, when people help to shine a light on the situation, it gives encouragement, you know. And um, I think this was originally done as a website and quite an informative website. And I think it just helped people to communicate together, to come together on various occasions that we've been involved in, but even prior to that and post as well. So, you know, I think in... In any community that's undergoing, you know, a really traumatic and stressful time, if, if people on the outside give support and encouragement, I think it, it, it really does help. And I think that's been the case. Um, and it's certainly, you know, the, the family committee have been extraordinary. And it's no longer a sort of invisible community or a voiceless community. I think, you know, people have really rallied against this and uh, done an incredible job. And, and Section 27 and SADC have, as Harriet said, been amazing. And I think they'll continue to be so. And hopefully we can add to that, you know. And I think our job, in a sense of storytelling, is to shine a light on communities, individuals that are voiceless, in this case, you know, literally in some cases. But, but also they haven't been, you know, totally voiceless. They've had people fighting on their behalf. And, and they have been fighting. So I think it's, it's, it's all been a favourable outcome. And let's hope it just continues, yeah. That was Harriet Perlman and Mark Lewis discussing their book, Life Isidomeni, Portraits of Lives Lost.